It's time for another version of Autodesk Inventor. 2021 is about to hit your subs accounts, which means it's time for another TFI What's New in Inventor video. But before we get cracking, I'm not approaching this with the usual massive reduction and huge flare enthusiasm and excitement, just purely out of respect for the state of affairs across the world right now, because there's a lot of people who probably aren't going to be all that enthusiastic about a new version of Inventor. Let's be honest, businesses are closing, people are out of work. And the new version is probably the last thing on most people's minds right now. I mean, I appreciate if you're watching this in the future and it's all blown over and passed. I, I get that. It probably doesn't seem as relevant. But right now, it's the last thing on most people's minds. So I'm going to approach this in a regimented way. I'm just going to lay out what's new and then show you what the deal is with Inventor 2021. So without further ado, this is what is new in Inventor 2021. So let's get started with what I suspect will be the first thing most people will turn on when Inventor 2021 hits their machines, and that is the dark theme. Indeed, yes, Inventor 2021 has, it, it actually doesn't have a dark, it's got what, it, well, it's called the dark theme in the software, but it's actually a partial eclipse theme. It's sort of a halfway house between light and dark. So the partial eclipse theme is enabled by going into file, options, and then the colors tab and then if you go to the ui theme here you can change it from light to you can see it says dark pre-release it actually should be called partial eclipse because it's not dark it's partial eclipse you can see it says pre-release there now ignore this waffle about how it's it's not quite finished yet because it should be they've had a couple of years to work on it click apply wait for it to uh, switch over and then we can take a gander at the new partial eclipse theme but on that point why isn't it not finished yet every other software company over the last couple of years have managed to change their interface over to a dark theme regardless of how complicated and complex their ui elements are they've managed to just get it done why isn't this finished yet why do we not have a full dark theme i don't know anyway so it, it, to be fair it looks good the, the partial eclipse theme looks really good nice shades of gray the the viewport window looks really good against most models whichever one you bring up the the typical textures that you get in inventor look really good against this viewport shade uh, the contrasting shades around the ribbon bar and then the, the, the title bars along the top look really good. So overall, I'm happy with the colors that they've went for. They're not pitch black. They're sort of a halfway house. So the partial eclipse theme, there are some things to be aware of when the, the, the eclipse aspect of this starts to creep in. And that is, for example, when you close down a model and then the home screen kicks in, you need to be really careful of this because that will burn your retinas to shreds in a dark room. This blindingly white home screen <laughs> absolutely trigger migraines across the globe. It's awful, absolutely awful. So I would just suggest turn that off. Just turn off the home screen if you want to. If you want to run the partial eclipse theme, but you don't want to have uh, sort of lose, start to lose your sight and have that degraded over time, just turn that off. But there's other things like the, the you know, file new is still white, open is still white projects is still white nearly every file transaction dialog box is still white why even the standard windows transaction file transaction boxes are black what possible reason could there be for these to still be white i don't know but anyway that's the partial eclipse theme in autodesk inventor it's not finished yet but Here's to hoping that they'll have it finished by Inventor 2076. And next up, we've got some changes to the file naming defaults in 2021. By the way, these what's new features are in no particular order. It's not like, oh, this is the best one. The rest of them just go downhill from here. No, this is just randomly picked from the list. But if you go to file and then options and then the file tab at the bottom of that file naming defaults in 2020 point something, an update in the last release, we had frame generator and tubing and pipe naming enhancements. Uh, where you can pick and choose what names were given to the files that were created as a result of using frame generator and tubing and pipe, which was massive at the time. But that whole dialog box now has been shuffled up to be more user friendly. It's still a bit scary, especially the tubing and pipe one. When you first look at that, you're like, what the heck? But anybody who uses tubing and pipe will understand all of this. So the whole end result of the file names and the browser nodes could be customized. Uh, you've got things like it, unique index numbers. You can add the date that the file was created in the file name. I'm not really sure why you do that, but you, you can do. And this is new for 2021. You've got mirror and copy. So anything that's mirrored and copied, you can control the file name of those files in the same way that you do with frame generator and tubing and pipe. 
by adding in attributes and controlling the file name through the file naming defaults. So next we're going to take a look at a few commands that have been moved over to the, the, the sort of new property panel style of presenting commands to you which we saw introduced a couple of years ago. They're slowly moving over all the commands onto this new property panel style of user interface. Uh, and in this release, we've seen a whole bunch of new commands moved over. It's not very exciting, mate, but to be fair, honestly, cards on the table, this release 2021 is just packed with small tweaks and improvements like that. There's not many big hard hitting features in this release at all much really. So uh, we've got the likes of thicken and offset. We've got delete face. We've got the likes of copy object whole bunch of commands which have been moved over onto this new properties panel uh, and then the rest of them we've got the likes of bend part coil combine uh, let's say copy object decal delete face split thicken also frame generator that's also been moved over onto the new property panel this would have took a stack of effort to do so i do appreciate that and it's going to take a lot of getting used to for a lot of people somebody select insert frame that familiar dialogue box that a lot of us have gotten used to yeah, that's gone. You've now got to get used to this new property panel here. Uh, and then a lot of the frame generator commands have also been moved into this property panel as well. So yeah, that's it. They've still got a bit of work to do with the other commands. So the, the likes of fillet, for example, this still uses the old style. Once you see that in respect to the likes of this, you start to get why that needs to go and things need to start moving over to this because that just looks dated. So. Uh, they're getting there in the end. That's where the time's going, I guess, in these new releases. A few new commands moved over in the new properties panel for Inventor 2021. So speaking of things that aren't very exciting, there's <laughs> so many small improvements and tweaks in Inventor 2021 that aren't worth me demonstrating because they're, they're very small, they're minor, and the video would go on forever. But there is a lot of people out there who would be interested to know about them. So instead of demoing them, I'm just going to go through the What's New document and make you aware of them. So I've already mentioned uh, for the frame generator enhancements that the a lot of the tools have been moved over on the new property panel. Uh, there's been a, a rename of one of the commands. Trim to frame has been renamed to a corner joint up there. So that's happened. We've got a change to the reuse command. So when you're doing a reuse in frame generator environment, you don't have to pick the original frame. You can actually pick something that's already been used in the reuse uh, environment. We've got new zoom and view controls, uh, two new profiles, for the notch command, custom C and custom T templates. When you're placing a frame, we've got a new filter for categorizing the frames that you want to pick, which is quite useful. This is to aid and assist with the loss of the old frame generated dialog box because the loss of that dialog box has kind of shifted the goalposts a little bit. We've lost a bit of functionality with that dialog box. So they've had to add in some bits and pieces with that. Uh, also this as well, so we've got a new preview of the profile when you're hovering over the edges and sketch lines when you're placing frames. That is to replace that 2D graphical representation of the frame profile that we had in the old dialog box. So that's quite useful. Uh, trim and extend to curve. Uh, the trim and extend command now supports selecting a curved face to define the tool. So when you extend a frame member to a curved face, that works and you also don't get a weird curved trim either it will i think you get a preview yeah you get a nice straight cut rather than a curved cut to keep that realistic i've already mentioned the file naming defaults so yeah that's the the main bulk of the improvements to frame generator uh that's some part enhancements uh for 2021 we've got windows select multiple solids in a part file uh, okay uh, display extended information in browser enabled for multiple commands which I guess that could be quite useful. So you go into tools, application options, part, enable this ticky box here, display extended information after feature nodes, which has always been there for, well, for quite some time anyway, but it's now extended to include things like work planes, which is quite useful. So it lets you know how a work plane is being constructed, tangent with surface and parallel to a plane. And that works across other things such as uh, mirrored features, work points and work axes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the unwrap tool, uh, you can now select multiple plane to hold to be rigid, rename the unwrap feature and align the model res results to the X, Y, X, Z and Y, Z planes. Uh, 3D annotate, you can now add custom properties and the leader text. See, these sort of things, they're going to be really useful to people who are like proper, proper deep into 3D annotation. But for most people, it's just like, that that's not a big thing <laughs> for a new release. It's not worth demonstrating, I'm afraid. Like, that's why I'm just kind of glossing over these things in the way that I am. But yeah, that's the part enhancements in 2021.
And if you are starting to lose interest, fear not, because this one is pretty good, actually. I didn't know this one was even in the software until about half an hour ago when I was putting the video together. I was like, this is pretty good, this one. Uh, this is creating drawings, and it's it's about sheet formats and predefined templates. So uh, I'll just show you how this works. Right? What you do is open up your company's template, right? Your IDW, your DWG template, right? So, for example, go to, by default, I guess, C users, public documents, Autodesk 2021 templates, and then your standard IDW, right? And what you do is you pre-configure a layout for a drawing. So create a couple of base views. I think you do this for a part or an assembly. You, you'll figure this out either way. But go to your workspace, drop in I don't know, a part, for example, something like that. And then you create like some base views, projected views, isometric views, however you want to typically start a drawing with a set of views of. Set the scales, so one to 10, there's one to 20, gonna be two, that's way too small, one to one. Yeah, that'll, not one to two, that'll do. Right, drop the views in, right? Arrange them on the sheet so they look pretty tidy, like that, right? You can also drop in things like annotation and text, right? You can put in notes, you can put in parts list, tables, whatever you want. So you can preset up your sheet, how you want everyone to start a drawing with. And then what you do is you right click on the sheet in your template, and then you create a sheet format, and then call this TFI A3. Uh, three views with notes, something like that. Click OK, and then get shot of those because the, the sheet format's been saved. Yes, get rid of all those, save the template, and then close that down. Right, and now what happens, whenever someone creates a new drawing, they select the IDW template, but when they scroll down, you've got these new templates on the right-hand side, these sheet formats. And there you can see we've got the TFI A33 views with notes. So you can just start a new drawing, a blank drawing as normal, or you can select this predefined template. Pick a part, any. So that's the one we used to create the sheet format, but I don't need to use that. I can use any, that thing there. Click OK, and it'll just generate the drawing with the views already in place. Now you can see clearly that part's bigger than the one that I first made, but... You, can, you get the picture. So, I mean, I created a garbled text note there, but that could, that could be machining notes. It could be anything. You could have had the parts list up here, whatever you want. Hopefully, you might, if you're watching this, your mind can kind of put the pieces together and see what you can do with this. And that's just one sheet format. You can have three views, five views, whatever you want. But that's sheet formats for, I guess, automate, not really automating drawings, but just making starting drawings a lot better than we could have done in the past. So that's really useful. That's actually pretty good. I like that. For this next one, I had to jump back to 2020 to, <laughs> to verify this, because I was reading it going, huh, what? <laughs> could we, we, we couldn't take measurements in a drawing? I mean, I mean, I've, I think I probably tried in the past and then just never thought anything of it, but apparently not. No, the tools, measure button's just not there. If you want to take measurements in 2020 in a drawing, you've got to do a dimension. Oh well, 2021, yeah, the measure button is now available in drawings. You can't actually take measurements. <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah, there you go. 2021, you can now take measurements in a drawing, which is, which is pretty good, I guess, finally. This next one's born out of, I would suspect, an attempt to appease the likes of myself who keep beating on Autodesk to give us more information about what's going on in the background. Specifically, in this case, why files ask to be saved. So in 2021, when you hit the save button, you've got this new column here called save state. And then you've got a number of states which give you an indication as to why a particular file is required to be saved by inventor. So there can be a number of specific save states. There can be a migration, as you saw there, user edits, API changes, manual update, file resolution, change, mass property update, an implicit update. You can, you can tell these were put in by a developer. I mean, like API changes and file resolution change and implicit update. These mean nothing to the average person. So that they, honestly, these need rewritten, <laughs> made it a little bit more friendly. It's it's definitely a good, it's a good step forward. As much as I'd love for it to be like, it, this file needs save because user X made a change at 9.26 AM and he did a revolve or edited a sketch one. That's probably programmatically impossible. So, but either way, I think these need a bit of a rename just to make them a little bit more user-friendly and understandable. But that's what the dialog box could end up looking like. Whether or not the average user will even 
you know, this, the word migration and or the API flashes up. I think most users will just gloss over that and just fail to register that even being there, to be honest. But for the likes of myself, this is going to be going to be useful in uh, in some instances. So yeah, it's a good step forward. So that's a much much welcome enhancement for 2021. So I would suspect that this next feature would be the one that if you were to if you were to press them, they'd say this would be the flagship feature in 2021, and it's the Revit AnyCAD enhancements. Uh, you're able to now bring in a Revit model into Inventor natively and maintain a link back to the original Revit model. So it's all about the, you know, the, the BIM integration, that kind of stuff. So I don't have Revit. I'm not about to install it. I'm not about to get a Revit model to demonstrate it to you. So instead, I've got this video here to play to you. So what you're looking at on screen here is Inventor 2021, and somebody has a Revit model, an RVT file imported into Inventor. So I'm going to hit play, and then someone's going to jump back over to Revit to the original source model, and then they're going to make a design change to the to the source model. So the whole point of this being that someone can make a change to that source model, and then it sends an instruction to Inventor to tell it that the source model has been changed, and then it can pull through the changes from the source Revit model through to Inventor. And I believe you can do that through the likes of the BIM 360 online cloud collaboration service as well, so you can share these kind of changes online. So that change has been done, and then in Inventor, you'll see here the little update flag has appeared there. So when you click that update flag, you should see around here that design then updates to suit the uh, the new Revit model. There you go. So that's the, the Revit AnyCAD enhancements in 2021. We've had this functionality for other CAD uh, applications, other, other CAD uh, files, which is, is most welcome, this sort of native interoperability which we've had and we're starting to get used to now is uh, is really useful it's, it's only going to help a lot of people who are starting to work together with companies that don't use the same packages as you do so uh, especially in the world of bim most useful most welcome that's the revit anycad in inventor 2021 and finally yeah i know and finally uh, there's the, the usual stack of performance enhancements which uh, are hitting the assembly environment, which I would love to focus more attention on too, but we just don't get given any metrics for these. There's just no, you know, there's just no numbers to, to benchmark these against. Assembly improvements for express mode and opening an assembly. Well, what, what does that mean? What, what, opening assembly, how faster is it from 2020? You know, what has happened? What's faster? Is this just nothing to this is it just flat out faster opening the semi by how much if what what about frame generator is faster i mean okay do, do we just take your word for it i guess we'll have to but yeah i guess it's just one of those things that if you're going for 2021 it's just be aware is it worth it well all of these things are faster but <laughs> how do you how do you measure that i don't i honestly don't know so yeah that's that's about it mate i'm afraid um there's, there are a stack of other things which I haven't mentioned, but they're really small things in, in my mind anyway. To other people, they might be quite big, but uh, I mean, like, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Like, if I jump on over to the top page of what's new in, in 2021, there's there's some things in or one or two things in iLogic which I didn't mention because they're just kind of one liners. Uh, the JT command, for example, when you're doing a JT export, it now includes PMI data, product manufacturing information. Not everybody exports JT files, so it's not something which I felt like it was it was worth focusing on. Uh, in the sheet metal environment, uh, there's a different way of, of specifying the flange angles, that sort of thing. Uh, just just minor things like that. So I've covered the rest of it, to, to be fair, the, the bulk of it. And yeah, that's it. So 2021, it's is it is it worth going out of your way to upgrade for? Honestly, mate, I, I, just, I can't say yes, it is. But as an incremental release it's got a lot of solid improvements in it's gonna be as long as it's reliable as long as it's solid as long as there's nothing fundamentally broken about it it's probably going to be worthwhile going up to uh but yeah as you've seen from the what's what's new list there's no getting away from it there's no hiding from it there was no big hard hitting features in there that are definitely worth getting excited about honestly in all please for the love of god don't jump onto the oh that's it that's the fusion 360s taking over bandwagon this is the start of invent declining and the focusing on fusion it just doesn't work like that it just, honestly it just doesn't work like that it's just one of those things i, th I think right without saying too much because i can't but there was a really 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 big feature that should have been in this release but they didn't have finished which is going to probably come either in a mid-year release or the next release 
and I think they were banking on that being in this one, but it wasn't ready. So um, yeah, that's possibly why this one was a little bit, a little bit uninspiring to some degrees. But there you go. That's oh, that's invented 2021. What's new? Uh, it should be appearing in your sub boxes over the next week. Week beginning March 30th. Thanks very much. Check out the What's New documents yourself just to see if there is anything that I've missed. I've scuttled through them as much as I can't really. But yeah, have a have a look through yourself and enjoy. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles. Thank you.